We are here today to talk about percutaneous nephrostolithotomy. I'm Kyle Wood. I'm a urologist and assistant professor. Today we're going to talk about the surgery day and what to expect, some of the equipment we use, some of the larger complications that we may experience from surgery, how we drain your kidneys with tubes, and how we follow you up after the procedure. Percutaneous nephrostolithotomy means that we're going through the skin and we're going to remove the kidney stones through your back. This procedure is usually performed for large stone burdens or complex anatomy. It does carry a higher complication risk than the other stone procedures and is a bigger surgery. After anesthesia, we will place you in the prone position. This basically means you will be laying on your belly. This allows us to access your back and locate where your kidney is and get to your kidney stones. On the surgery day, you will require an overnight stay. You do, you do require general anesthetic during the procedure, and that procedure itself can take a number of hours to perform and complete. Many people need time off of work following this procedure, and you may require multiple days in the hospital. When you wake up from surgery, you will have a number of tubes that are help draining your bladder and your kidney. The catheter that goes into your bladder is called a Foley catheter that will allow for drainage of your bladder. You may have multiple tubes draining your kidney, which will come out of your flank. The way we perform the procedure is we initially go up through your urethra, which is the tube that connects your bladder to the outside world, and we go into the bladder and then the ureter. The ureter is the tube that connects the kidney to the bladder. We place a small tube up there into the kidney. This allows us to inject contrast or dye into the kidney, which will help us gain access into, through your back into your kidney to perform the procedure. We always use small, special techniques to get into your kidney, and we have special equipment to remove these stones. Initially, when we go through your back, we are able to find the calyx, or that uh, area of the kidney where the stone is. We place a small needle in there, and we will pass wires down that will allow us to get entrance into the kidney. We use a small tube that allows us to go from the back into the kidney, and through that tube, we use cameras. When we're in there and we see the stone, we have many different equipment and tools to break up the stones and remove them. Some of these require lasers and others require devices that break up the stone. Oftentimes, even though we attempt to remove all the stone, there will be small stone fragments afterwards. We do perform a CT scan in the morning after the procedure to ensure all the stones are removed. If you do have some stones left over, we oftentimes will go back to the operating room at a later date and remove the, any remaining stones. These other procedures are usually easier and less painful. This is a big surgery, and we will do everything to limit your risk of complications. But the major risks that you need to be aware of with percutaneous nephrostal lithotomy are infection, including sepsis, which may require a long hospital stay, bleeding, which may require transfusion, where we need to give you blood, or another procedure by interventional radiologists where they block the artery that's bleeding. This is known as embolization. We are always looking at your CT scan and your anatomy to try to ensure that we do this procedure safe, but there's always a risk that we could damage local structures, including any structures of the urinary system, including the urethra, bladder, ureter, and kidney, and any surrounding structures that are near the kidney, including bowel, liver, and spleen. After the procedure, you will wake up and have tubes in the back. These tubes are designed to protect and drain the kidney. You will notice that the urine coming from these tubes will be red, and that is not unusual. In addition, the tubes are much smaller than the tract that we use to gain access into the kidney, so you may experience drainage around the tubes. Again, you may have multiple tubes if we needed to access the kidney at multiple different areas to get all your stones. So after surgery, what you should expect for your post-operative care. You may have severe back pain. It may take us some time to get good control of this discomfort. In addition, many patients do not like the tubes. These tubes are necessary, and they can be uncomfortable, and it may make it difficult to lay on that side. Again, leakage of the, around the tube is not unexpected. This is normal, but it can ruin clothes, and we suggest taking precautions for this. As I've stated before, we will get a CT scan the day after surgery. 
This tells us if there is any stone remaining. If there is stone remaining, we will discuss with you about the need for another procedure. Once you are sent home, if your symptoms are not controlled, you can call the office. In general, you should try to avoid coming to the emergency room. Oftentimes, when we talk to our patients, they say that they have long waits in the emergency room, they get imaging that is unnecessary and exposure to radiation through these imaging procedures, and oftentimes the urologist or the ER physician will just simply give medications to control the symptoms. All of that being said, if you are experiencing fevers or significant bleeding, this would be an indication to go to the emergency room immediately. After the procedure, some people will go back to work even though they have tubes draining in the kidney. It really depends on your job and the, your job requirements. Most people, however, will take time off while these tubes remain in. And once we remove all the stones, we will usually have you come back to the office in a few days to have the tubes removed. Again, multiple procedures may be needed to remove all the stones. Typically, in follow-up, we have you come back in one month where we get an ultrasound and an x-ray to ensure that all of your kidney has healed up and there's no further stone burden. This, even though this appointment is set up as one, at one month, we are always available by phone and we have multiple avenues to get you seen in clinic if necessary.